Hi everyone, it's Dixon here and in this video I want to provide you with a long term review of the MacBook Air M1. I've had this for just over three months now so I want to share what my experience has been like. Just quickly if you're new to my channel please remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on my future videos. Otherwise let's get to it. The design of the MacBook Air hasn't changed in recent years, but I do think that it's managed to stand the test of time. Even though it's got larger bezels around the screen, I think otherwise it all looks very slick and very minimalist. It's got that lovely tapered finish, and it feels good when you pick it up. It's very lightweight, and it's just so portable that you can easily throw this in your bag or put it wherever you need to without having to worry about it. And actually I found that this great design has meant that I've used my iPad less and less. The MacBook Air M1 only has two ports available, which are the USB-C Thunderbolt ports. And these perform really well if you're using those USB-C connections, but obviously if like me, you've got lots of different accessories which you want to plug in, such as an SD card or maybe an old school USB-A microphone or whatever it is, you're going to have to invest more money in those adapters or rather dongles. I've already had to invest in two dongles, one for the USB-C to USB-A adapter so that I can plug in my microphone, which I'm using right now, and another one of USB-C to SD card reader for the SD card in my camera, again, which I'm using right now. So if, like me, you've got lots of other accessories that you want to plug into the MacBook, please bear in mind you're probably going to have to start buying dongles straight away to get yourself up and running. For a laptop keyboard, I've been really impressed over the past three months. It's not going to be the most ergonomic experience, of course, when you compare it to what you've got at your desk. But when I'm typing away and I have the laptop in my lap, it is comfortable. The keys offer some good level of resistance. Again, considering it's so streamlined and low profile, and I've never had any issues of it mistyping, that sort of thing. Equally, I really like the large trackpad, so it gives you plenty of space when you're swiping across with your finger, and it just performs really well. So whether that be hard pressing or right clicking using two fingers or using the different gestures available as part of MacOS, it all performs as you would expect it to. Whilst the screen on this laptop doesn't offer anything wildly new like mini LED or OLED, I do find the contrast to be really good, the colours are extremely vibrant and the refresh rate and everything is perfectly adequate for what I've been using it for. And I do use this when I'm doing things like video editing and colour grading and the colours on there are reliable to use on this screen. And I obviously like to test this so when I render my videos I put them up on my big TV in the living room and the colours are accurate according to what I thought they would be when I've been using the laptop. So while this isn't going to wow you in the same way that something like an OLED screen would, I've been really pleased with what this actually looks like. And I've been using this a lot and watching things like YouTube videos. So when I'm just sitting there in the living room, the video playback looks great. And obviously I can play back in a nice high resolution on that lovely retina display. And it just still looks fantastic in my opinion. So not gonna have the same contrast levels and everything else like OLED as an example, but I still think it's going to impress a lot of you out there. When I did my original review when I got the MacBook, I did say that the webcam is probably going to be adequate depending on your needs. Me personally, I've just found that I don't really use it, to be honest, that much at all, just because I've got my iPhone and it just massively underperforms in comparison, to be completely honest. So while Apple have worked to use software to address things like the lighting, so it actually does a good job of making everything a bit brighter in low light, you do still get a lot of noise, so it looks quite grainy when you're speaking to people. And typically I'll do things like FaceTime calls or Skype or whatever in a slightly lower lighting setting, perhaps when I'm in the living room or bedroom or something. And I don't want to have to put all the bright lights on in that room to get a good picture for people on the other end. So I've just found that it's actually a bit of a shame because it is comfortable to have the laptop there, but the webcam itself does underperform. One of my biggest fears when I bought this MacBook Air was how it was actually going to handle things like video editing. Was I going to regret getting the Air over the Pro? Obviously the Pro has the fan which means that after extended use, if it does start to overheat, 
the fan can keep it cool for much longer and therefore reduces the risk of any throttling and therefore worse performance. But I've been incredibly pleased that after three months of doing videos for my YouTube channel, so that's one video per week, and then I edit for a round two to three hours at a time consecutively, sometimes a bit more, it has basically never ever had any issues. There's been a small number of times where things like audio and video has gone out of sync for a few seconds, when I've got a huge 4K video on the timeline and I've chosen not to actually cache that on the laptop. But other than that, it's performed exceptionally well. And this thing just doesn't seem to get hot. I use dual monitors and I'm always doing my video editing on dual monitors, both at a 2K resolution. And so I was just expecting this to struggle at least some point or one moment in time. And it never has. I cannot get this laptop to slow down. The performance is just fantastic. It never gets hot, not even remotely hot. And it basically means I've just been really pleased I had the confidence to go for the Air over the Pro. So if you're considering doing some 4K video editing, such as myself, then I'd say go for it, definitely. Something of note as well is that I went for the 16 gigabyte RAM version with the eight core GPU. And to be completely honest, Originally, I said that it's probably important to future-proof your laptop, but having seen how all of this performs, most of the time I'm not using all of that RAM, even when I'm doing video editing. And to be honest with you, having a look around online, I don't get a sense that there's a huge difference between the 7 and 8 core GPU versions. So unless you're really going for some really intensive stuff, I'd say that sticking to the base model stuff with the 8 gigabyte RAM and 7 core GPU is probably going to be fine for you because if it starts using swap memory, so when it's using hard drive instead of RAM when it's run out of space, that performs incredibly well equally. So I've done a separate video that shows the speeds of the internal SSD on these laptops and it is fantastic. It's around 3000 megabits per second. So that's why you probably just wouldn't even notice when you've gone through all of that RAM. So please definitely consider that when you're looking at the configuration and you want to go ahead and purchase. Also, just a quick point on the hard drive space. I actually paid a lot of money to get one terabyte. Again, the performance is incredibly fast, but what you'll see in one of my other videos that even though we have such a fantastic speed on these hard drives, you can do 4K video editing on an external SSD like the Samsung T7 for a fraction of the price. So one terabyte costs you around 130 or 140 pounds here in the UK, which is a fraction of the cost of what you'll have to pay to upgrade the hard drive space in your MacBook. Naturally, when it comes to things like rendering a video or whatever, it will just absolutely cruise through on the internal hard drive on these MacBooks. So I'll say it's all about preference. If you really want those blazing speeds and you want to make the most of it, then perhaps pay a bit extra for your hard drive. But for the rest of you, I'd say probably don't worry about paying extra money for the hard drive space. Just go out and buy an external hard drive. It will save you a lot of money and you'll still enjoy great performance. Apple boasts up to around 18 hours battery life with these MacBooks, which I think is really good. Just as a bit of context in terms of usage, if you're using these MacBooks for things like watching 4K video, you're going to get around 6% battery usage after one hour, which I think is really good. And going back to my earlier point, this has been one of the key reasons why I've been using my MacBook much more than my iPad, because it's basically got a battery life comparable, which I think is pretty amazing considering the performance that these MacBooks have to offer. So as you can see, over the past three months, I have thoroughly enjoyed using this MacBook and it really did help to address my biggest fear, which was, did I need to go for the pro version in order to do my video editing for YouTube? And as you can see, I don't. I have produced 4K videos every week for the past few months and I've had no issues whatsoever with performance. It has been fantastic. So I'll leave it there. If you have any questions, please add them in the comments down below. I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.